Welcome back to Vampire. I'm about to go back to the main quest. We need to go locate the man's flat in the burrow. If you remember, we received a message with an address from that body that had been thrown from the roof of the asylum over here with the address of this place. So that's where we need to go for the main quest. But just before that, I want to do something real quick, something that's been sort of hanging over my head and I keep forgetting about. Remember the uh, widow in distress over here? And I talked with them and I saved them and then I thought I was done and then I came back and just kind of forgot about it. And then later I found out there's still a quest for it. Convince them to go back to Whitechapel. So let's do that. Where are they? They were right there at the entrance. They're 100 meters that way. Okay. How did they get over here? Oh, wait, when we talked with them, I think I, I told them they should leave and they said something like, I need to speak with my, uh, I need to speak with my husband or something first or father. I, I guess what they meant by that was I need to go see their grave first. So like, this must be their grave. Why do I still feel so dis- Are you all right, Miss Shun? My name is Xiao Shun. This is the proper way to address someone in my country. I do apologize, Xiao Shun. Are you all right? Yes, I am. This is the only place where I can find some kind of serenity. Some way to remember my dear Matthew. That's a funny kind of serenity. I wouldn't feel very serene at all surrounded by monsters. <laughs> How you doing, by the way? Oh, you have gold. How do you feel? I... You should... They're level three. Not that I'm going to bite them. Just always check that for curiosity's sake. You realize you can't stay here forever, don't you? Eventually, you'll have to leave the cemetery. Why? Why should I go? Since this is the only place I can find peace of mind. But you're not dead. There is a difference between visiting the dead and staying with them. You sound like you're no stranger to the pain I feel. Let's just say... I, too, have a good reason to visit cemeteries at night. <laughs> Please accept my condolences for your loss, then, Dr. Reed. Are you on your own? Do you have any friends or family who you could be with? I have family and friends, but I need to be here alone. One day, maybe, I'll go back to them. But not now. I need silence. And I need sadness. It's not very silent. There's skulls screaming in the distance. Or at least there were before I killed most of them. I've seen many deaths in my life. And we all grieve in our own way. Some stay silent or need to shout. Others need company. And some just can't stand it. Thank you for your sincere words, Dr. Reed. I sense you trying to help me, even if I don't quite understand why. Tell me how your husband died, Xiaoshu. Matthew died of the Spanish flu, like so many others. It's a mundane cause of death these days, but for me it meant the end of the world. At this time, there is so little medical science can do to defeat this terrible epidemic. I'm truly sorry. The worst thing is not his death, even if it tears me apart. The worst is not to have seen it coming, to have lost him so quickly, even before realizing it. Did he hide his condition from you? Matthew was a smiling type, a happy sort, everything that I am not. Did he laugh at his death to come, or did he not realize what was going to happen? I'll never know. The Spanish flu may be the worst disease mankind has ever faced. Why are you blaming yourself? You don't understand. I didn't know he was so sick. I didn't realize the gravity of his situation until it was too late. As harsh as this sounds, we are all equally vulnerable to this awful disease. It can take the strongest man in just a couple of days. I never said goodbye to Matthew. We never realized how bad it was. We laughed about it, even. He always made me laugh. 
Now I don't have enough tears to shed. Are you a doctor yourself? Is this why you feel so guilty for not saving your sick husband? No, I am not. But I still need to blame someone for Matthew's death. And who else, if not his wife, who did not see it coming? I'm a physician. One of the best in the country. But I was unable to save my own sister, Mary. She died in my arms. Why tell me this? Is it supposed to make me feel better? No. But I felt I should share it with you. Since she is buried here too. May I ask what caused the death of your sister? You could say she was also killed by a terrible disease. A disease I have sworn to fight and cure, no matter how long it takes. Thank you for sharing that with me, Dr. Reed. Maybe it's time we start to rebuild our lives, you and I. Any news of Nurse Crane's dispensary? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? That would be a weird thing to ask. You should go home now. I think you're right. Cemeteries are for the dead, for they need silence too. Thank you for your honesty and your wisdom, Dr. Reed. Thank you for your company, Xiaoshun. Take care on the way home. Maybe I'll see you again in Whitechapel. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Matthew. The world has gone completely mad. I'm glad I did that. It was nice talking with him. So it sounds like I might be able to talk with him further in Whitechapel at some point. But for now, back to the main quest. 29 Pretty Orchard Street. This is it. What's in there for me? There's been a fight here. This window was shattered with violent force. Someone's been pulled through it and dragged through the street. Who could have done that? Yeah, it goes this way. Sir, step away! <laughs> <laughs> Bad at dodging that. They're really good, really good shots. Something on the tree. Yeah, that's definitely a message. This is the very flower my mother tossed on Mary's coffin. Someone is targeting my family. Her shoes and clothes are quite worn out. The marks on this woman's neck were made by the fangs of a vampire. Only a golden watch in her pockets. then. It's a sick game, but given no choice in the matter, 
I might as well win it. Follow the shadowy figure. Member of the Ascalon Club? Let's take a look at the things we got. A muddy and stale flower, probably the one thrown on Mary's coffin when buried. Beautiful watch. A nice golden watch found in the pocket of a woman killed by an unidentified vampire. Is this just a stepping stone? Yep, looks like it. You're like running footsteps. It sounded like something. Jonathan. What was that? That's creepy as hell. Jesus Christ. Please just talk. Talk with me normally. Oh. I won't let you escape. Very fast, but I'll catch you. They've all been butchered. I... hmm. I don't know if the implication is that they've been butchered by the person I'm chasing, but that doesn't really work because I literally just went here to speak with that person in the cemetery and these bodies were here back then as well. So that doesn't really quite work. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> um, you might want to leave now. Confront the mysterious vampire. Help me, please. The hell kind of a trap is this? What is, what is going on? Have you done? Vicar Larrabee? What happened? Demon! Hell Scourge! Son of Perdition! Vicar, <laughs> Vicar! Jonathan is no demon. He's just a loving son returned from the dead. Like your Christ, Vicar. Mary, it has been you all along. Oh, it's me, all right precious brother why did you lure me here i'm gathering the family for a final reunion all smiling all dead thanks to the good dr reed mary mother say hello to your son hello jonathan mother i what do we have here mother the prodigal son has lost his tongue our jonathan Always had the first and last word at dinner. The entertainer, the star of our show. Mary, let me explain. Shut up. It's my turn to do the talking. I have this nasty hole in my chest, Johnny. It needs to breathe. Right then, speak. My prayers went so long without an answer. My husband, killed in France. My child, carried away by the flu. My brother, promising to return in his letters, then disappearing in thin air. I went from hospital to hospital, cemetery to cemetery, grave to grave. I've lifted every stone in London, searching for an end to the nightmare. 
And there you were, in front of me, on a dark pier. It was the hunger. You know it now as well. The joy to have finally found you. I longed for your arms, a final happy ending to so much tragedy, to tell me all would be well again. As you did when we were children. It was this filthy dock where you greeted your sister. I dug a tunnel from my grave with my fingers and teeth. Mary. I had taken your life before I realized it was you. I tried to kill myself. Hmm. But you failed in your attempt. We cannot die, can we? We are a plague. I've watched you, Jonathan. You pull the strings and sever them. I've done what I had to do. I did not choose this fate, but I will have my answers. <laughs> There are no answers, Doctor. There's nothing left but pain and lies and treachery. Mary, wait! Time to go, Mother. Give my regards to my son. No! 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 This is what I do to those I cherish. Can you imagine what I have in mind for you? I'll destroy you! Finally, we hear the truth! Dr. Reed, admit it. You're a monster who takes joy in killing, who relishes the chase, the secrecy of it all. I'm still a scientist. I shall find a cure for this madness. You lie to yourself. Confess your sins. Over the slaughtered corpse of our mother! Are those tears, brother dear? Your heart still bleeds with emotion. My dead heart has dried. <laughs> you are mad. Oh, so that's what I am, Doctor. Mad? I was beginning to wonder. I've been hearing voices, one in particular. That of my dead brother. This is the reason I must kill you. Not for your betrayal. Not for our poisonous kiss. Not even for the lies you tell yourself. No. It's so that smooth and wicked voice will stop ringing in my head. I cannot let you kill again, Mary. <laughs> time to die, brother. And this time for good. Oh, wow. We actually have to fight our sister. Damn. It's an interesting dynamic. One thing I still don't understand, though, is how exactly did Mary turn into a vampire? I was under the impression that, from what we've heard, that it's not as simple as you bite somebody, then they turn into a vampire. Right? Didn't... I think it was Ashbury, Lady Ashbury, that told us they have to drink our blood. But Mary didn't drink Jonathan's blood, right? I mean, Jonathan bit Mary, and that was it. So then I was thinking maybe it was someone else who came along and somehow turned them into a vampire after the fact or or something. But I don't think so because Mary says that they keep hearing the voice of Jonathan in their head. And don't vampires only hear the voice, well, mainly hear the voice in their head of their, their maker? So if they're hearing Jonathan's voice, then Jonathan did make Mary. So I don't understand how they even became a vampire in the first place. It's very strange, but I'll roll with it. It's an interesting dynamic. They apparently haven't taken to undeath as uh as well as we did Leia. Also, it's really cool. Sorry to keep pausing, but I just got to mention these things while I still can before I forget about them. It's really cool that their main weapon is the the cross that was used for their grave. <laughs> that is such a cool weapon. It just looks cool just because it's a large thing and I don't know, kind of makes me think of Dark Souls, but also just the thematic appropriateness. It's kind of darkly hilarious, isn't it? Using your own graves cross as a weapon. Me Ooh. Again, 
You've spared the precious nurse Crane. But not your own Mary. Give me your blood, priest. No, no. Shit. Final thoughts are just to die for. Rest oh my god. Okay, so I can't stun them, right? They resist the stake. Oh wait, no, that time they didn't resist it. Okay. You left me to rot in this grave. Come to me, Jonathan. What have you done? Assassin! Kiss me again, sweet brother. Okay, hold on. What are they resistant to? I need to pay attention to that. They're highly resistant to blood, moderately resistant to physical damage, so claws, not so good. Ultimate, well, I might as well use it. It doesn't cost anything, but shadows are going to be a good way to go. Shadow attack? You left me to rot! What have you done? Okay, hold on. I, I desperately need more stamina. I'm really running out. I need to use some of my stamina serums. Um, I wish I had more slots. I guess I'll replace a blood serum with a... Stamina serum? Do I have a normal one? Yes, I got two normal ones. I don't want to use the light ones. Rest in peace, monster. Oh, Jesus. Because you spared Sean Hampton, don't expect... Okay, hold on. Hold on. That's the last of my normal uh, health potions, but I do have some light ones. And I should also get more blood. Do I... Do I not have any full blood ones? I don't. No?
Yes! Well, brother, it's time to bring this conversation to an end forever. You know I will not play this game. Calm now, Doctor. Like a rabid dog. Or think you're performing an autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. I'll kill them all. The kind Dr. Swansea. The sweet little lass with hair of red. I am the Harbinger, bringing your punishment. Mary. Don't you see? This is not me. Flesh that never ages. All nightmare, no dream. Bring it to a close. Let me sleep. I will find a cure, Mary. I swear it. Then, at last, I can forgive you. Oh, I need to actually press forwards. Are they going back in their grave? few nights later. It's interesting that they didn't give me a choice on whether to kill Mary or not. I was really expecting that because they like to give you big choices. I'm surprised they didn't. Jonathan did what I would have done actually. I would have killed her. So it didn't actually make any difference to what would have happened in the end. shed one last red tear for my fallen sister. I realize the entire world now revolves around this singular word. The epidemic that has stricken London is not the Spanish flu. It is transmitted through the blood via violent biting, turning survivors into frenzied immortals. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am a vampire. Born anew into an age of death and pestilence, while plotting factions close in around me, I am sworn to find the source of this epidemic. I am convinced greater perils are still to come. I know the answers I seek are hiding in our blood. Find the origin of the epidemic in the West End. The Great Hunt. Meet Lady Ashbury in the West End. Lots happened, huh? Wow. And I have 10,000 XP. Read your mail, the quest says. So are these all multiple main quests? Oh, the whole of Chapter 4 is find the origin of the epidemic in the West End, and this Great Hunt quest is just the first part of it. Because each chapter has multiple parts, like all of these, for chapter 3. Okay. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. That was... Uh, let's just talk about it a little bit before I end, though. That was a lot. I actually really liked it. It was surprising. I wasn't expecting Mary to have been turned into an immortal, because I didn't think it was possible without them having consumed our blood, but apparently it is, so I guess I don't really understand how that works very well. And I wasn't expecting to have to fight them. I thought they were going to kind of draw it out, you know, like they 
give their speech and then they disappear and then maybe I have to fight them near the end of the game or something like that, which would have been pretty cheesy, but thankfully they didn't do that. They made you fight them right then and there. And it was a challenging fight too. I was really running low on resources, pretty much used up all my uh, blood and health serums. And there's something especially grim about, well, God, everything that happened. So let's just summarize all the grim things that just happened. We ha we just killed our sister a second time, the first time by accident, this time very rightfully done on purpose. Our sister killed our mother, so now I think our whole family's dead. Also, our sister killed the vicar that we confessed to, so... Yeah, don't know how forgiven I feel now. And our sister tried to kill us using their cross from their grave, and we had to rebury them. It's uh, darker than I expected this game to go, but I like it. Alright, let's end it there, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to read our mail.